Okay, we're gonna rewrite this trigonometric expression strictly in terms of sine. So you notice we have tangent, we have secant from the very beginning. Let's go through this and first rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine if necessary. And then we can work on rewriting it in terms of sine. So as we get going on this, I'm gonna to try to identify um, any uh, identities that we utilize along the way. So I'm gonna first replace tangent with sine over cosine. So we can say, well, tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. The identity we would utilize in that situation is sometimes referred to as the quotient identity. One of these fundamental identities. The next thing we have is secant of theta. Again, not in terms of sine and cosine yet. Let's replace that with one over cosine of theta in this situation. Um, that's referred to as the reciprocal identity. reciprocal identity. All right, now everything's in terms of sine and cosine. Uh, we can think of that two as being two over one if we'd like, and we can multiply all the numerators together and we can multiply all the denominators together. So we can say that's two multiplied by sine of theta and then multiplied by one isn't gonna change anything up in this numerator. So I'll leave it like that. Our denominator, you can think of this as one times cosine times cosine. It's gonna end up being cosine squared of theta. Cosine multiplied by cosine makes two copies multiplied together. We can indicate that using an exponent. Now, the next thing that kind of stands out to me is we still have cosine squared in the denominator. Our goal was rewrite everything in terms of sine. So off to the side here, whenever you have a square, you want to be thinking the Pythagorean identity. So the Pythagorean identity is typically cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals one. And what we wanna do is I wanna replace cosine squared. So I wanna get cosine squared on one side by itself down here. We can do that by moving the sine squared to the other side. So I would subtract sine squared from both sides, therefore moving it over to the right-hand side with the one, and we can say cosine squared can re be replaced with one minus sine squared of theta. So we have two sine of theta all over one minus sine squared of theta. And again, this was just based on the Pythagorean identity is what allowed us to replace that denominator with one minus sine squared. All right, now, as we take a look at what we've ended up with, the only trigonometric function that remains is sine of theta. So we've gotten rid of tangent, secant, cosine squared, everything's been replaced and it's been written strictly in terms of sine. So we're done, that's it. Hopefully this makes sense as we picked out the identities that we utilized along the way. I always suggest rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine from the very beginning. Whenever a cosine squared or a sine squared shows up, be thinking Pythagorean identity. It's a big help as we get comfortable with all these different formulas and identities. Good luck. Keep practicing.